everybody. My name is Chloe. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button below. Share these videos with anybody who's interested in presidential uh, history. And co uh, comment below, like the videos, follow me on Twitter at ChloeGotOB40, all that fun stuff. So today's president is our 23rd president, Benjamin Harrison. He served from 1889 to 1893, and his vice president was Levi Morton. Here is a picture of, Le of Benjamin Harrison. So now we know what he looks like, or looked like. Okay, so let's get into this because a lot happened. March 4th, 1889, Benjamin Harrison was inaugurated. The first time since 1875 that Republicans controlled both houses of the Congress. March 27th, 1889, the first cabinet meeting. Harrison decides against using the informal kitchen cabinet, criticizes the practice of sensational courtesy, and spoils the system. Secretary of State James G. Blaine is a prominent figure and campaigns uh, campaigns for interests in Latin America and Hawaii. April 29, 1889, the Berlin Conference. Samoan affairs begin with the U.S., Germany, and the U.K. bringing peace to the area. Quote unquote, the final act of the Berlin Conference on Samoan Affairs declares neutrality and nominal independence. Blaine handles the negotiations. May 3rd, 1889, Roosevelt visits the White House. Harrison appoints Teddy Roosevelt as Civil Service Commissioner on May 7th. Roosevelt heads the department in 1895. <clears throat> August 6th, 1889, Harrison tours New England reveals plans to expand the Merchant Marine and Two Ocean Navy. October 2, 1889, the first Pan-American Conference. Blaine initiates it, increases the U.S. common interests in Latin America. November 2, 1889, North and South Dakota become states. They are the 39th and 40th states. November 8, 1889, Montana becomes the state, which makes it the 41st state. A lot of states are, are uh, admitted into the Union at this time. November 11, 1889, Washington becomes a state, which is the 42nd state. December 3, 1889, Harrison's first message to Congress. He recommends civil rights and civil service reform, naval legislation, improved conditions for railroad workers, and pensions for veterans. December 4, 1889, Harrison nominates Supreme Court Justice David J. Brewer. To the, uh, the Senate approves it two weeks later. June 27, 1890, the Dependent Pension Bill was passed. It provides benefits to union vets, uh, their children, and widows. By 1907, the cost to the government for this program was more than $1 billion. July 2nd, 1890, the Sherman Antitrust Act. It forbids business practices restraining trade and commerce or, or creates monopolies. July 3rd, 1890, Idaho becomes a state, so now we're up to 43 states. July 10th, 1890, Wyoming becomes a state, 44th. July 14th, 1890, Sherman Silver Purchase Act convinces... Uh, Harrison convinces free silver senators to com compromise on legislation. legislation. Uh, it gets support from the farmers uh, saying that it will increase silver coinage, or if it increased silver coinage, it will inflate currency and raise prices. The Treasury buys 4.5 million ounces each month. July 29, 1890, Harrison requests to ban lottery tickets, uh, and it was the sale by mail. Not trying to rhyme or sound like Lynn Manuel. September 2nd, 1890, the anti-lottery bill. Uh, it was proposed by John Caldwell of Ohio, and it was signed on September 19th. 
October 1st, 1890, McKinley Tariff, introduced by William McKinley. Average duties on many goods increase to 49.5%, and it expands the power of the president in foreign trade. November 7th, 1890, Democrats gain the seats. A large sweep in the House, the, state, the Senate Republicans fall to eight. December 29, 1890, Harrison appoints Harry, Henry B. Brown to the Supreme Court. The, the same day, the Circuit Court of Appeals is created. Uh, there's nine Circuit Courts of, Appe Court of Appeals, and it, it was created to relieve demands on the Supreme Court. March 14, 1891, New Orleans lynches. A New Orleans mob lynches 11 Italian immigrants from Sicily. Italy severs ties with the U.S. and threatens war. Those murdered among the 19 Italians were indicted for murder. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. I'll just read it the way that I wrote it down. Those murdered among 19 Italians indicted for murder of police chief David C. Hennessy. Hopefully you get that. All 19 were cleared. May 6, 1891, the clash with Chilean forces. U.S. seizes a Chilean rebel ship, Etada, carrying arms to San Diego. Rebels defeat Balmacada government in civil war. Please, please forgive me if I'm pronouncing these words correctly, incorrectly. October 16, 1891, escalating conflict with Chile. Brawl between the U.S. and Valparaiso, Chile, or Chile, however you pronounce it, results in the death of two Americans. Tensions between the U.S. and Chile uh, escalate. December 9, 1891, Harrison addresses Congress. It denounces Valparaiso attack as savage, brutal, and unprovoked. December 16, 1891, Harrison nominates Stephen B. Elkins as Secretary of War. The same day, considering war with Chile. All members of the cabinet, cabinet are on board with this. Secretary of State Blaine is the only one who's against it. January 21st, 1892, sending an ultimatum to Chile. January 25th, 1892, special message to Congress. Harrison asks, asks lawmakers to take appropriate action regarding Chile. January 26, 1892, Chile backs down. They pay an indemnity of $75,000. May 23, 1892, Harrison decides on a second run. The party bosses oppose him. June 4, 1892, the Secretary of State resigns. There were disagreements over disagreements with the president, uh, sorry, Blaine had disagreements with the president, and that increases. Blaine gets more sick and dies less than eight months after leaving office. June 7, 1892, the Republican National Convention, Convention nominates Harrison. They meet in Minneapolis this time, and Whitelaw Reed of New York is nominated as his vice president. June 23, 1892, the Democrats nominate Grover Cleveland with Adlai... E. Stevenson as his vice president. July 6, 1892, Pinkerton's bust steel strike. When I read that, I was thinking left behind. Uh, for those of you that don't know the series, I suggest you read it. it the, the name Pinkerton doesn't come in until well into, uh, I don't remember which book it is, but it comes far down the line of the, of the books. So it's not in the actual book of Left Behind, but it's in one of the later ones. Um, after, after a lockout over contract dispute, steel workers, homestead, uh, steel workers of the Homestead plant, also called the Carnegie Steel, in Pennsylvania fight with Pinkerton Detective Agency. Seven Pinkertons and nine workers die. Six days later, 8,000 militiamen join the Pinkertons to protect them. July 11, 1892, the silver mine, strikes turn, silver mine strike turns violent. It's at Coeur d'Alene in Idaho. 
they go on, on a violent strike. 30 men are killed. Harrison sends federal troops to restore order. July 30th, 1892, Homestead Steel Strike. Harrison privately supports mediation, sends Whitelaw Reed as emissary to Henry Clay Frick from Carnegie, left in charge, uh, excuse me, Henry Clay Frick, who was from the Carnegie uh, Steel Workers, left, uh, he was left in charge of Homestead. The strike lasts five months, breaks the union, and it was a major blow to organized labor, and it ends on November 20th. October 25th, 1892, Harrison's wife dies. She suffers from tuberculosis. November 8th, 1892, Grover in Cleveland wins the presidency. 43% of the popular vote goes to Harrison, while 46% of the popular vote goes to Cleveland. The electoral votes were 277 to 145. January 17, 1893, Queen, okay, I'm going to butcher this name, Lily Ukalani of Hawaii was, disposed, was deposed. Provisional government established under Sanford B. Dole, which I'm guessing that's the pineapple company. Um, reach, uh, the word reaches Washington, D.C. on January 29th. Harrison deploys 150 Marines to Hawaii for protection. Of the government. February 16, 1893, attempting to annex Hawaii. Uh, it was sent to the Senate and they refused to act. March 4, 1893, Gro Gro Grover, bleh. Grover Cleveland was inaugurated. Harrison returns to Indianapolis. So this is where Grover Cleveland was the only president thus far that has had a split presidency with a president in between. So he did serve two terms, as I said in, in uh, the last video, uh, where he run, where he's president for four years and then there's another president and then he is back in office for a second, second term. So tomorrow we, uh, t well, I might decide to do tomorrow because I wasn't, having a good day yesterday so that's why I didn't put the video out yesterday um, if I don't it'll be Monday but uh, the next video will be Grover Cleveland's second term in office as the 24th president right 24th yeah as the 24th president of the US um, if you remember in his last one his wife as they were leaving the White House said we'll be back in four years and he was so that happens tomorrow, or the next video will be about Grover Cleveland's second term in office. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end it. I'm sorry I wasn't more entertaining this time. It was kind of a bland video, I guess. Um, all these clouds and the stupid SAD are starting to kick in, so I'm not having the best days lately. I'm trying to stay positive, but... When you don't have clouds, or when you don't have sunshine, and you suffer from SAD, and you refuse to take medication because you've been on it before, um, it sucks. <laughs> so, come back for the next video, which will be Grover Cleveland, whether it's tomorrow or Monday. Um, I'll be talking about the second term of his presidency, and what happened during that time. So I think that's only about 20 things that happened because when I originally counted, there were like 60 things that happened in his presidency, but that was over the two, two terms. So I think there was 40 in the first one, so we're down to about 20 for the next term. So come back for Grover Cleveland term two and stay safe out there starting today through the 20th of January when the inauguration happens. Um, please don't go and incite any more riots or be a part of any riots. If you want to take part in a peaceful demonstration, I suggest you do so from a safe distance. I don't want any of you guys hurt um, unnecessarily. And so you guys try to have a sunny day. Obviously, it's not sunny outside, but try to have a sunny day, if even in your heart, and we'll see you for Grover Cleveland, part two. Class dismissed. Bye.